In 1974, in a house near the river of Amityville, Ronald woke up seeing weird visions and hearing voices that tell him catch them, kill them. When the clock struck 3.15, Ronald loaded his weapon and began going from room to room shooting his entire family. Jody heard the shots and tried to hide in the closet with her favorite bear, but Ronald found her anyway and shot her after telling her he loved her. This is a real case that appeared on the news back then and shook the entire nation, especially when Ronald said that the house told him to do it. One year later, George and Kathy are happily living together as newlyweds. Kathy has three kids from a previous marriage, and while Michael likes George just fine, Billy and Chelsea aren't big fans. One afternoon, the couple goes out to look for a new house and ends up driving around Amityville, which George thinks they can't afford. Kathy doesn't care and as soon as she sees the beautiful house near the river, she calls the realtor for a visit. The house is huge, and George can't understand why its price is low. Kathy notices a black stain on the ceiling but doesn't think much of it, and George must admit he likes the boathouse outside because he has a speedboat. There are some weird noises in the corridor that the realtor hears and chooses to ignore while the couple looks around the house, but when they make it to the basement, she refuses to go down there. The couple does go, and George finds a clock stuck at 3.15. Once the tour's done, Kathy convinces George to get the house even if they have to eat less for a few months since the deal is amazing. George is hesitant yet he accepts but only after asking the realtor where the catch is. The realtor finally admits this is the house where the infamous tragedy happened, which makes Kathy have doubts but George reminds her that houses don't kill people, people kill people. Some days later, the family moves into the house and has a wonderful first date together recording the whole process. In the evening, George starts to feel cold, and while Kathy doesn't feel it, he still goes down to the basement to throw more wood into the furnace. There are some weird noises that he at first thinks come from the clock radio but it isn't even connected, then he discovers it's just the wind going through the air vent. When George returns to bed, he and Kathy begin getting busy, but George gets distracted when he sees Jody's ghost in the room. It disappears in seconds, but George now doesn't feel well and ends their activities for the night. The next morning, George wakes up with an awful cough. Kathy hears Chelsea talking to someone and when she checks on the kid, she finds her alone. Assuming it's an imaginary friend, Kathy plays along, but Chelsea can truly see Jody's ghost living in her closet. She's also made a picture of Ronald, but she doesn't tell Kathy who it is because Jody asked her to keep the secret. While George is outside chopping wood, Michael approaches him with a weird metal object that he found in the basement. George snaps at him and forbids him from going down there because it'll be his office, but he quickly apologizes with a hug for his reaction. Moments later, George and Kathy suddenly hear Billy's dog Harry barking like crazy, and they follow the noise to find Chelsea dangerously standing on George's speedboat with a balloon in hand. It takes a few tries from her parents to make her snap out of it, and once they've dragged her away from the water, Chelsea explains Jody only wanted to see the boat. The family returns to the house then, and George makes sure to put a lock on the boathouse. In the evening, strange noises wake Michael up. He wants to go to the toilet, and since Billy won't wake up to go with him, he tries to be brave and goes alone. As soon as he reaches the hallway, he looks through the window and notices the boathouse is open, so he rushes to the bathroom in fear. After peeing, he tries to wash his hands but the water won't come out from the tap. Suddenly, a creepy ghost appears next to Michael, causing the tap to start dripping blood. Terrified, Michael runs back to his bed while all around the house, furniture and windows move on their own. At that moment, George hears a shot and runs out of the bedroom to check on the boys, unaware that blood is now dripping from a light switch. In the boys' bedroom, George is shocked to see himself standing next to the bodies of the kids, and this creepy version of himself tries to end things for himself as well. Suddenly George wakes up and discovers it was all a nightmare happening at 3.15. He gets out of bed to close the window and notices the boathouse is open, there's also a balloon coming out of it. Thinking Chelsea may be inside again, George runs to the boathouse and finds Harry barking at some bubbles in the water. George immediately dives in, but there's nothing down there. Now Harry's barking outside, and when George follows him, he discovers Jody's face on the window, which quickly moves to then appear next to Chelsea. George runs inside to double-check only to find Chelsea peacefully sleeping. He then checks the closet, where he doesn't see Jody being held against the roof by creepy hands. George does find Jody's bear and decides to leave it in the bed with Chelsea. The next morning, George is down in the basement watching Harry trying to dig at a hole in the wall, which has a mysterious stain on its wood. When Kathy checks on him, George explains this is the only warm place in the house because someone keeps opening the windows. He also explains Harry woke him up, and when he mentions the boathouse, he reveals he found the lock keys in Billy's room, so he thinks it was all a prank because Billy doesn't like him. Two weeks later, George keeps asking Billy for an apology, but Billy refuses to take the blame for something he didn't do. While Kathy's in the kitchen, the magnets on the fridge move on their own to spell catch them and kill them. Then she hears the sound of someone running behind her, and when she turns around, she discovers the creepy message. Worried, she goes looking for George, but when she returns and finds him drinking milk, the message is gone thus she blames it on her imagination. In the evening, George and Kathy are going out on a date. Billy doesn't want a babysitter, 
but he quickly changes his mind when Lisa arrives and he sees how attractive she is. Lisa used to babysit for the previous family, and after the parents are gone, she tells Billy the whole story. Ronald had first thought his dog was evil so he killed it, a few days later he thought his family were demons and killed them too. She's suddenly interrupted by the arrival of Michael, and while Lisa tells him to cover his ears, he ends up hearing everything anyway. Lisa explains the deaths with gruesome detail, and afterward, she shows them the closet where they had found Jody. Chelsea shows up too and shares that Jody says Lisa's an awful babysitter, and it turns out it was Jody that got Lisa fired. Billy dares Lisa to enter the closet and Lisa does it, ignoring Chelsea's warnings that it may anger Jody. Lisa finds Jody's bear right before the door closes behind her, and the boys can't open it from the outside even if it doesn't have a lock. As Chelsea's drawing toy displays a message saying hate her, the lights begin flickering and Jody appears in the closet to make Lisa touch the bullet wound Ronald left on her forehead. Lisa screams in horror as many creepy visions appear in front of her, and the boys run to find help. Moments later, an ambulance takes a traumatized Lisa away. George yells at the boys for pulling a dangerous prank, ignoring Billy when he says it was the house that did it. The boys don't want to sleep in that bedroom anymore now that they know about the tragedy, but George forces them to anyway. Kathy goes to check on Chelsea, who explains Lisa had been mean to Jody so Jody hurt her. Jody also thinks Kathy's a good mom so she won't hurt her, but she hates the bad man that lives in the house and makes her do bad things. The next day, George leaves Billy to work with the wood until late, making him miss dinner. Kathy thinks George is taking the discipline too far, but he thinks Billy needs a father's strict hand. Later while George is working on fixing the basement, he hears Billy and Michael's voices coming from the vents, chatting about what a twat he is. He also can hear a voice telling him to catch them, kill them, and when George touches the wall with the hole, he suddenly finds himself in a room filled with weird tables with taps on their sides that drop blood on the floor. One of the tables has a body on it, and when George checks it out, he sees himself saying kill them. Once the vision is over, George runs to the bathroom to throw up. When he tries to take a bath to relax, suddenly two arms appear in the water and try to make him drown. He struggles against the hold, yelling until Kathy finds him and helps him out. The next day, Kathy takes George to see the doctor, who can't find anything wrong with George physically. George admits he started to feel better the minute they left the house, but he protests when the doctor asks him to see a psychiatrist, pointing out he isn't crazy. At home, Billy is watching over his siblings. Chelsea leaves the table to find her bear, and when her parents return, they find the bear on the ground outside. Suddenly they hear Chelsea's voice and when they look up, they find her casually standing on top of the house. While George takes his ladder, Kathy runs inside to take the stairs and climb out the window to then follow Chelsea. Chelsea explains she must go with Jody, but Kathy manages to grab her just in time. Unfortunately Kathy begins to slip, so George leaves the ladder and runs to catch Chelsea right when she falls. Moments later, Kathy yells at Chelsea for doing something so stupid, making her cry when she says Jody isn't real. Chelsea replies Jody was going to take her to see her dad, making Kathy think her daughter is reacting badly to grief. George overhears all this and says this is a wacko family before grabbing all his things from his bedroom and moving to the basement. Sometime later, Kathy goes to see Father Calloway to share her worries over something evil possibly living in the house, and the priest isn't surprised to hear she's living in the house of the tragedy. Meanwhile George is chopping wood and making Billy hold the logs even if he's scared about having the axe so close to his limbs. When Billy begins to cry, George threatens him into behaving. In the evening, George is in the basement watching the tape of their moving day. Suddenly, he sees Billy's face getting all demonic, and thinking his mind is playing tricks, George decides to go to sleep. At 3.15, he wakes up again when he hears the voices telling him to kill them, so George leaves the basement and finds all the house doors open. Harry is in the boathouse barking again, thus George grabs his axe and goes to check. As soon as he enters, George is attacked by a creepy zombie-like creature and he immediately defends himself with his axe. It isn't until the creature's dead that George realizes he's actually killed Harry. After hiding the body, he proceeds to clean the blood off the floor. The next morning, George can't stop the guilt from weighing on his mind. Kathy tries to tell him they should leave the house, but George refuses as he holds her hand to the point of hurting her. An argument begins that makes George yell at Kathy, only to be interrupted by the boys coming to ask about Harry. George tells them Harry probably ran away, ignoring Billy when he responds their dog never does that. In the afternoon, Father Calloway comes to exorcise the house and notices Chelsea holding Jody's bear, so he tells Kathy in private that Jody had been buried with that bear and it shouldn't be here. When Calloway begins working, all the doors around him close on their own, and a noise begins coming out of the vent. Calloway checks it out and is suddenly attacked by a huge swarm of flies until the doors open again. Terrified, the father runs out of house and ignores Kathy's pleas for help as he gets in his car to drive away. When Kathy turns around, she bumps into George, who reminds her she's got him. When night falls, George can't sleep because he keeps hearing the voices and Harry's barking. The TV suddenly shows him the same visions Ronald had seen and asks him to kill them, making George run outside to stop hearing them. From the window, Kathy sees her husband suffering on the ground. On day 28, 
Kathy decides to go to the library to investigate the tragedy. She learns that Ronald heard voices, that he also moved to the basement, that he killed his family after 28 days, and that the police found a notebook with the same spelling she had seen on the fridge magnets. Afterward, she researches the house and learns a reverend built it under the pretense to take care of the Native Americans when actually he abused them through various methods, including the weird contraption Michael had found in the basement. Kathy rushes to see Callaway to share this information and Callaway admits he hadn't believed Ronald when he came with the same problem, but he believes it now, meaning Kathy needs to get her family out of the house immediately. Meanwhile George is finally tired of the whispers and begins knocking down the basement wall with a hole in it. On the other side, he finds a bunch of worms and a second wall, which he also knocks down to find the room he had seen in his dream. Here George finds the ghosts of all the Native Americans that the Reverend had killed. At the end of the corridor, George finds the spirit of the Reverend himself, who reenacts the night of his death. He had ended things so his presence would live forever in the house, and now he can possess George. Suddenly George wakes up and goes to answer the ringing phone, but as soon as he hears Kathy asking him to leave the house, George tears the phone off the wall. Kathy rushes back to the house and finds George in the boathouse, looking for spirits in the water with a flashlight to get rid of them with the boat propeller. When Kathy calls his name, George turns around and blinds her with the flashlight, making her fall into the water. Her hair gets stuck in the boat's propeller, and when George checks on her, he sees a demonic face and turns on the propeller to get rid of it. Kathy struggles against the hold until George finally sees her real face and lets her go. Kathy runs into the house and finds Chelsea in the basement, where they discover coffins for the whole family. George suddenly shows up acting creepily, prompting Kathy and Chelsea to run away and meet with the boys to try to escape. George grabs a weapon and begins chasing after them, easily pushing away every obstacle the family throws his way. The family can't find an exit because all the doors and windows close on their own, and eventually George catches up to them to grab and hit Kathy, only to let go of her when Billy hits him in return. Chelsea guides the family upstairs so they can escape through her window, which is open because it used to be Jody's. They climb on the roof and when George shows up to follow them, Billy tears off a piece of metal from the chimney and hits George with it, causing him to fall and lose his weapon. The family then tries to re-enter the house through a different window, only to be scared away by the Reverend's ghost. They end up coming down by using the roof stairs, only to discover George has woken up and has retrieved his axe. He grabs Billy and gets ready to kill him because he still sees him as a demon, but he's suddenly stopped by Kathy, who is now threatening him with his own weapon. George dares her to do it, but Kathy can't bring herself to kill her own husband, so instead she knocks him out. Visions of their happy days together flood George's mind as he wakes up and attacks Kathy with his axe, only to realize this is a vision as well. Coming to his senses, George asks Kathy to kill him, but Kathy just knocks him out again before she and the kids tie him up. Then they drag his body to the boat, where he wakes up again as the visions of the tragedy flood his senses. Billy wants to leave him here, but Kathy forces her kids to obey and the whole family leaves on the boat. Once they're far enough from the house, George shows that he isn't affected anymore and finally accepts they need to leave for good. The family never returns for their personal possessions. Back in the house, Jody screams in fear as the house rearranges itself, the clock shows 3.15 again, and two hands pull her spirit away. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.